Good morning and welcome. My name is Chris Steele. I'm the rector of St. Christopher's Episcopal Church. I want to thank all of you for being with us today. And a special welcome to those of you who are joining us online. We're grateful that you're here. If you're following the service, you can find the lessons in the link in the description of this video. And just let us know you're here by uh, a prayer request, a thanksgiving, or simply a hello in the comments. We look forward to hearing from you. And as your plans allow, we invite you to consider joining us one Sunday morning, 10 a.m. here at our corner of uh, Lover's Lane and uh, Central Expressway in Dallas. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to consider supporting us through the link you'll find in the description of this video. Our opening hymn this morning is number 484, number 484.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, Plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is in your bulletin to be set in unison at the bottom of the third page. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away 
because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as it is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfast and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Please be seated. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. I printed the wrong gospel in your bulletin, so um, made, sure, made sure we got the right one, so that's a good thing. This is the one I'm preaching on. If you uh, hear the stories or believe the stories about the first day at really high-powered professional graduate programs, I'm talking about law school, medical school, you know, the ones that uh, we really esteem, the ones that, are, that have the reputation of being the hardest to get into, and then lead to the, the careers that so many of us esteem so much, you hear the story about a convocation that happens on the first day. Now, whether this actually happened or not, I'm not sure. It sounds, I've heard it enough, that it sounds apocryphal. But you hear the story about the dean or some other uba of the school uh, telling all the students out there, look to your left and then look to your right and realize that at the end of four years, one of those people isn't going to be there. Presumably, this is a tough program. Not all of you are going to make it. And when, uh, and when that happens, the dean also says, if you're starting to get smug and proud of yourself, remember, two people looked at you. <laughs> so, on, on Reformation Sunday, I like to think about that. Today's the day, of course, it's the, tomorrow will be the anniversary, right? Uh, 105 years, as it turns out. Uh, since the day that Martin Luther woke up one morning and decided he had something on his mind, 95 things to be exact, and hammered them to the door in Wittenberg Cathedral. Now what happened as a result of that? We started telling each other how wrong we were, how you aren't going to be there at the end when everything gets decided. We had a series of excommunications of each other. They called them anathema statements. You had a council. You had uh, convocations that, that threw Luther out. So Luther had a convocation or a council that threw all the Roman Catholics out. And Calvin didn't like either one of them, but, so he decided all of it was his idea to begin with, and it threw everybody else out because they hadn't been predestined for this. Um, Zwingli decides that if it even hints of being vaguely Italian, it's out, right? <laughs> so all of this has been, it, it became, for all the good things that came out of it, for all the good things that come out of something we call reform, I think one thing we need to really be aware of and careful of is how when we have this reformed mindset that we decide whether it's the person on our left or the person on our right, whether they are going to be at the heavenly banquet when the end comes, when that time comes. Christians, especially from an intellectual tradition, right? Not that, not that there's not intellect in all of that, but we tend to rely more on a book than anything else, right? Our Book of Common Prayer. We tend to rely on those formulations of the faith that come from ancient times. We tend to look at the ones who wave their hands and are more free and say, well, just wait till the end when I'm there and you're not. And vice versa, it happens that way. But Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus tells us something different. I've always wondered what to do with this guy, but the, the moral of the story, I guess, is that if you climb, if you're short enough, you can climb a tree, there's always a way to get to Jesus. But you think about what Jesus says. Jesus says, come down, why? 
Not because you don't belong in the tree, but because tonight I am dining at your house. Pharisees, teachers, are all there wondering what Jesus is doing. Because if they were looking to their left or to their right, the last person they thought they might see would be Zacchaeus. Because when this banquet happens, when this meal, when Jesus comes, happens, it is not because, like Isaiah is talking about, we have gone to the temple at the right time to make the right sacrifices. It is not that we have calculated the tables of the moon and the stars so that we make sure we're standing in the right place at the right time. The banquet happens when Jesus says, I am having my banquet. Jesus says to Zacchaeus, I am having it at your house. Jesus might be saying to you, I'm having it at your house. I've often thought about this thing and what it might look like. Who might be there? And I am convinced that at that banquet there are going to be place cards and I think a lot of us are going to be surprised who we're seated next to. On a day like Reformation Sunday, I'd ask us to think about what it would really mean to be reformed. I don't mean edit our book the right way. Stand up and sit down at the right times. What I mean by reformed, what I hope for Reformation Sunday is for all of the times when we have said we are invited, you are on the outside, that we can reform and say and rejoice that each other's here. When Jesus says, I am coming to eat at your house, He's inviting himself to each one of us. We can rejoice not in our differences, what makes us different from everybody else, what makes one anathema and one in. We can rejoice because we're all invited. Jesus is calling us to come down from whatever tree we climb come and be a part of a meal that he will prepare for us of himself. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. Amen. Yeah. Let us stand and profess our faith. <clears throat> we believe in one God. Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For Joseph, our president, Greg, our governor, and Eric, our mayor. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and George, our bishop. And for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray today for Judy, Amy, Ed, Kathy, Mike, Shannon, and Paula. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Jacob Arino and Steve Notham. Lord, let their loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Just a couple of things that uh, I want to point out uh, coming up. You so, might have seen in our weekly email uh, that we are, have the return of thanks plus giving. Uh, that'll be, I think that's three weeks from today, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, please be aware of that. And if, you're, if you're new to us, thanks plus giving is a tradition I am learning about. It's uh, one of the things that is coming back to us after uh, Corona time, things that we're trying to restart and be a part of again. It's the, um, we call it the parish meeting before the parish meeting. We kind of talk about where we've come this year, what we want to see happen in the coming year. We think about who would like to be uh, on our committees, on our vestry, and things like that. But it's a great time, and there will be a potluck because we're a church and we can't live without potlucks. Um, <laughs> and Nancy has already put up a, uh, a sign-up sheet for all the things that we're going to need uh, to have, make that a great time. So I'd like you, all of you to think about that and see you know, what, what is it that we can do to make our, have, have ourselves 
a really good party once again for that. It is also our in-gathering day. So the last few weeks, we have been talking about stewardship. And amongst the things we think about with stewardship is thinking about what our pledge will be for the coming year. And so you found in your bulletins today, and we have some extras outside, uh, this year's fancy new pledge cards. So uh, if you are able to, what I'd, like you, what I'd like to ask you to do is after we've been talking about this for a while, uh, these last few weeks, take that home and put that someplace near where you pray. Uh, so that it's there and think about what your church means to you and what it is that you can offer to God for the coming year, 2023. So we'll gather all those cards in and all our pledges uh, at that time, and that will help us think about all of the great things in ministry that we can do for the coming year. So with that in mind, uh, please make sure that you, uh, that you sign up for that as we go over. All baptized Christians are invited and encouraged to come forward for Holy Communion. If you, uh, as you came in, you should have received a little cup. That, that is how we distribute the wine here at St. Christopher's. So you just come forward with that. Uh, place your hands before you, and I'll place some of the consecrated bread there. And then Deacon Jenny will come behind, and you will receive the wine in uh, that, that small cup. Uh, if for any reason you'd like to come forward, but you, you would not like to receive communion, we still invite you to come forward and uh, receive a blessing. Just put your uh, arms over your chest like so, and uh, that will be our indication to give you a blessing rather than Holy Communion. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come in.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 688. Number 688. 